Hey guys, so I made another racket video. This one's titled Stop Reading Reviews. If you haven't seen it, I'm gonna put a link in the pinned comment and you take a look. And just like some of my other racket videos, this one got tons of engagement. And I think that's great when tennis videos get engagement. This shows me there's a lot of interest for tennis. But in this video, just like some of the other racket videos that I made, you guys have made some claims about me that are untrue. So some of you guys are making my video out to be some kind of attack on other YouTubers, especially a Tennis Nerd was brought up in the comments a lot and I got absolutely no problem with Tennis Nerd. In fact, I watched some of his videos, the videos that he makes where he does tons of research and he tells you what actually the pros are playing with. The videos about Nadal, I've seen uh, a video recently about Chilic. He does a tremendous amount of research and those are great videos. So my video had absolutely nothing to do with Tennis Nerd, I was simply saying that tennis players have their preferences and when they write about their own preferences, this has very little meaning to other players. And just to clarify, my video about racket reviews dealt with actual racket reviews online. Like when you actually go buy a racket and the reviews that you see on the website where you're gonna purchase the rackets from. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about YouTubers reviewing rackets but I can just tell you that you have to understand when YouTubers are reviewing rackets, they're getting paid to review these rackets. And this is why in my videos, I don't take any money from any racket company when I'm reviewing rackets. Why? Because I wanna tell you my honest opinion and I actually invest money into my videos. I buy my own rackets. I'm a bit of a racket collector. And if you take a look at my testing old rackets video, testing weird rackets and my top five rackets, I bought all those rackets. I spent over $2,000 on those three videos alone. And why do I put my own money in there? Because I wanna tell you my honest opinion. If a company gives me money to do a review, I'm gonna be forced to do a positive review on the racket. So at Intuitive Tennis, when I'm talking about a specific racket, you know it's gonna be my honest and real opinion. Another comment brought up the wide string pattern that Wilson has made called the S for spin. And I am very familiar with Wilson Rackets. I was under contract with Wilson for many, many years. I played with Wilson Rackets for probably 20 years. And I have tried pretty much all the rackets in our lineup. And this particular commenter was talking about the Wilson Steam Racket, which is one of the best rackets that Wilson has ever made. I believe that Simona Halep and Alina Svitolina still play with the old Steam. So whatever they're playing with now is painted. But I'm sure Tennis Nerd uh, can either confirm or say that I'm wrong, but I believe that Simona Halep and Elena Svitolina are still playing with the Steam, and it's a fantastic racket. And yes, they made the S version, which is a super wide string pattern. Now, there was one player back in the day, he played with an insanely wide string pattern. That was Mark Woodford. I'm not exactly know uh, what the exact specifications of the string pattern were, but the string pattern was so wide, the gaps between the strings were like this. It was insane. So here's what I've been able to experience with my players that have tried those S rackets from Wilson. If you have a swing path that generates either underspin or topspin, yes, those type of rackets can give you more spin or underspin. However, if you are more of a flat ball striker, those rackets will do very little for topspin. In fact, your flat balls are gonna have a lot less control. And that is exactly what happened to me or to some of my other uh, junior players that were testing the S they were losing tons of control. I felt like I had very little control because of that wide string pattern when I was hitting my flat shots and also my serve. However, on my kick serve, I felt a little bit of an improvement. So for me, those rackets were very difficult to play with, but yes, it's not completely false. The S standing from spin can produce more spin, but here's the thing. The only thing that will produce spin is a top spin swing path, or if you want to play with a lot of underspin, an underspin swing path, will create topspin. The racket itself will never create topspin. And the vast majority of comments in my latest video agree with me, but there are some who are defending reviews. And if you wanna to continue to read reviews and um, decide what racket you're gonna play with based on reviews, by all means, continue doing so. But I'm telling you, uh, through my experience in tennis, the only way to find your preferences in tennis, whether it be strings or rackets, is to actually go out there and play with these rackets. It doesn't matter what you're gonna read. Once you're out there on the court and you're actually playing with the racket, it's a whole nother world. Just believe me. The only way to do it is by demoing these rackets. Reading about them will do very little to find 
your perfect setup. And that brings me to another point that people brought up that they don't have access to demos. Now you might not know that all the big companies that are selling rackets online, they have demo programs. So anywhere in the United States, you can get demos. It's very inexpensive and every single company that sells rackets has a demo program. The same is true in Europe. Now, I don't know about some of these other countries. I have absolutely no idea. It might be true that you might not be able to get your hands on a demo if you live in a specific country. If that's the case, you gotta find these rackets somehow and go out there on the court and try them out. In any case, guys, I'm gonna continue doing a lot of tennis equipment videos. Why? Because I'm passionate about it. I told you that I'm a racket collector, but I'm also a string collector. I got tons of different strings at home. Anything that you can possibly think of, I got at home concerning a tennis string. And I like testing out strings. I will say that when it comes to strings versus rackets, with rackets, once you find the racket that you like, I recommend, just like in all my videos, that you stick to the racket for as long as you can. Even when the racket gets discontinued, try to get your hands on as many of them as you can. But when it comes to strings, this is where you can be more flexible and try things out. Even it would be okay to have different type of strings and different rackets. So it's a little bit different rackets versus strings. I feel like you can have more flexibility testing new strings rather than testing at different rackets. So you can look forward to many more videos at Intuitive Tennis about tennis equipment and some of these videos are gonna be released very soon.